All right. So overall, you know, the scene's starting to really come together. There's going to be plenty of little tweaks and refining as we get closer to that final state. But overall, it's looking nice. Um, so I like where the current state is. So I'm going to save this as a new version just in case we start messing it up too much. And I want to just play with the camera angle just a touch. I want to make the glass a little bigger, maybe lower it. And right now we're just kind of reframing our shot. Again, the our whole focal point is this ca camera, it's, or is the glass, so let's zoom in. And I'm going to just rotate a little to the left. It's not too bad again. And this is going to be totally to personal taste, but we're just just trying to find an angle that looks pretty cool. So right now, let's kind of work on some of those uh, reflections that we added earlier that are coming from the environment itself. So I'm going to drop down to that image probe that we were looking at earlier. Let's just kind of start, again, start playing with that one and rotating it. Might get us... Those highlights are a little too strong. So we're just kind of rotating again. Imagine there's we're in the inside of a sphere and we're just kind of rotating around it. And all this is going to be, you know, to your own eye. You might not be using the same image I am. You use one of the studio setups. That's pretty nice. This is kind of cool. These kind of highlight pin highlights are kind of fun. You know what, for now, I think I'm going to leave that. It's looking pretty good overall. So one thing we can start adding in is just a little bit, some hand place, some lights in the scene. Um, still think the richness of this diffuse amount is a little high, so I'm going to come down. And really, you should uh, the gamma correction I showed you earlier should really only be on color maps. On uh, diffuse amount, uh, any image that's driven as an amount, you can kind of keep that gamma as one. And now I'm just going to drop the low value to two, high value to ten. Basically, we're just darkening that image a little bit. I want it a little bit darker because I'm going to start adding some lights. And as I add those lights, I want those to sort of pick up um, sort of the highlights and bring up the values in here. So liking where that is. So now let's start actually adding, right now we're lighting completely with the that was HDR image, but now let's start adding some lights. So I want to add a spotlight to the scene. They're easy to control. Um, again, this I think is displays a little large. We're not actually changing the size of the light, just kind of how we see it in the viewport. And here I want to rotate that light down and bring it up. Now you can kind of see, wow, we're really brightening that scene overall. And I don't want it to give any of these uh, specular highlights. And frankly, I want the edge to be a little bit softer. So the spotlights, if you want to change the softness of that, while you have it selected, it's these two little widgets here. So as I pull that one in, it's going to have a little bit more softer edge. Let's see if we could illustrate that better to the sort of fall off uh, of that lamp. So if I come down into my lights palette, let's look at that light. Well, it's giving all that specular highlight. And right now, I really don't want it to be causing any specular. I like the reflections that we have now from the environment. So I'm actually going to turn specular off on that light. So now it's not going to catch any of those sort of spec highlights on the light itself. and I also want to change the color of it. If we look back into that final render we had before, we got some sort of, you know, it's a little warmer over here, some cools over here. So right now it's just a hard white light. So I'm going to change the color value of that. Give it kind of a nice warm richness. Well, that's starting to look cool, you know. We want to play off some maybe some warmth and some cools when we start placing these lights. Uh, right now I think the cone angle overall is just too wide. I'm going to bring that in, bring up our softness. 
and I really just want to kind of see. Now we're just we're not getting those hard cart uh, shadows coming through anymore. We're really just kind of getting these highlights on, on the table itself. So by changing this cone angle in, it's basically the spread. The light's not really spreading overall over the whole scene. I don't want to see those shadows. So now I can just kind of start art directing basically where we want that light. It's kind of nice seeing it back here. It's sort of brightening, brightening up that background. And this is kind of, this is where sort of your artistry and your eye come to play. It's looking kind of nice. Again, just really want to just catch that back end of the table. If we pull it up, we're going to get a little bit more broadness from that lamp. That's kind of nice. So I'm going to leave that as is for now. And I'm going to right click on that in the item list and again duplicate it. And grab the light and let's move it to the right side of the frame. So let's start finding where that is in frame. So we're just kind of moving it into place and watching it in preview, kind of update. And this time, instead of a warm light, let's give this side a little bit of a cooling effect. You always want to play up your warmths and your cools. And that kind of, look at that, a little blue highlight. Just, just adding a little bit more contrast to your scene. Maybe you can go, ooh, yeah, the rich purple is kind of cool. I like that. So let's bring it over. You've seen that kind of warmth it's giving? Or, I mean, not warmth, but the cool contrast we're playing with. Might want to broaden the uh, cone angle itself. So, pull this guy out. Now we're getting some, We're just playing up, you know. You don't really want to have a white light in your scene. Some warmth, some cools. All that leads to. Just more drama to the overall to the image. Let's hit save and let's go look back at that render we're trying to sort of emulate. See, it's got a lot of these nice, kind of cool blue lights. So let's maybe pull that even in the frame even more. Well, again, broaden that cone angle. So if I'm in the move tool, is when those widgets come up. You have to kind of be in the move tool to grab those blue widgets, or you can come to the properties of the light itself and just broaden the cone angle there. I like what it's giving on the table, but I really don't like the shadow it's giving. So on the shadow, if you click the light itself, there's a property for shadow type. I'm actually just going to turn it to none. So this image, the light now is not casting any shadows um, through the glass. If you look at when it's on for ray trace, you're starting to get that shadow through the liquid in the glass, and it's giving that hard edge. That's not what I want. I want no shadows on this light. So I'm going to come back to the other one. The first one we did, I'm going to turn no shadows on as well. And maybe now I can pull that even closer in the frame and broaden his angle and softness and move it over. Now we don't have to worry about casting those hard shadows. We're really just arc directing this light, getting this real nice warms behind it. Look at that. Real nice soft fall off here. These cool blues. Let's even turn the intensity of this blue light up. So you click the light itself. It's got this radiant intensity. So that's how bright the light actually is. So if I turn it up, we're going to just catch a lot more of those blue highlights. Um, you know, it might be too much on this metal itself. But we can always tweak that later. Later, but if we turn take, take those two lights off in the scene, look at this. This is kind of dull brown. Uh, boring, not boring, I mean, it's still a nice looking render, but it's a little bit more boring. Adding those warmths and cools are really just playing up that drama. I really like that. I think it's starting to look pretty cool. So I think the metal overall is just a little too hot. So I'm going to click the metal material itself. And right now it has a, a gradient for. Um, the reflection color. I'm going to turn that off and I'm just going to drive the reflection and the color on the material itself. So if I just 
hold shift and pull in the slider. We can turn it down to black. That's not really doing what we want. And I think we're overcomplicating it with this material. So I'm going to turn, I'm actually going to delete all these extra layers on top of it. Right click on all those, hit delete. And now I can control this material just with the diffuse color here. So if I turn him all the way down, it's getting darker. And maybe we're just reflecting too much. I've turned the reflection down to maybe 5%. Down to 25. There's what it was. So it's the diffuse amount, which is a little high. So I'm going to turn. That's clearly not giving as much drama as we had before. But I don't want that to be you know, a huge focal sort of pulling your eye into it. I just want it to be some enough breakup to differentiate between uh, the table material and that back material. So a few things I'm looking at now are just, uh, if we go look back at that final render that we're trying to emulate, is inside the glass, it's got a lot of this sort of texture to it. Uh, it's trying to kind of give the look as if uh, some of the liquid had kind of a uh, you know, coated the glass and kind of give it a little bit of film to it. Right now this one is looking pretty darn clean. Also I want to do a quick little lip on the model itself. Um, what I mean by that is, so let's zoom in, let's select that item just for the glass. And I'm just going to kind of take all these top little polygons. I'm going to hit are to scale those and just scale them in just a hair. There you go. You'll see that just kind of breaks up that refraction and it gives just a little bit more of a lip to that. But also I want to add a little bit of bump map um, to this glass. Nothing's, I don't know, again, it's looking so darn perfect. It's really giving it that CG feel. So we'll, we'll just come back and we'll add another noise layer. So we come down into texture, we'll add a noise, we'll make that effect bump, but again let's change the effect here in our camera, uh, in our preview render, to really only visual view what that layer is doing. Since we're not seeing them, it's hard to see kind of exactly what we're doing, so let's change our surface shading, the bump itself. Well, let's take a look at that, we just added uh, that noise layer, now it's changed its effect. Surface shading, bump. And there we go. Uh, again, let's turn the frequencies down on that. So just a real soft, and let's maybe lose some of the contrast. So if we change the bias down, maybe the gain. There we go, just real sort of soft, and maybe make him a little bit large overall. So just click that link. Add them again, equals. That's kind of nice, just a touch break up overall. I'm even turn the opacity down to 50% on the image map, on that uh, procedure layer. But that's, sort of, that's just kind of giving the small imperfections uh, of the glass. Now let's come and start adding sort of that fake little. Um, wash as if there is a liquid in there. So here I'm going to add another bump ma map, but I'm going to change the blend mode this time to multiply. So we're just like in Photoshop, where all we're getting are those dark values. And here let's just change the gain kind of far down, or the bias down, the gain up. Let's just make this a real small material, 0.225, oh, 0 0.0225, so 2.5 millimeters. And there we go. Now we're seeing just those tiny little black sort of highlights. They're not highlights, but uh, values in there. So you can see without that layer, it's just sort of the soft, uh, as if it was a hand-blown glass and you have some imperfections in it. And this one we're hoping just to allude to a little bit of liquid on that glass. So change the shading back, the effect back to shading. 
And now it's just way too noisy overall. It just it lost any of that value. But we want that bump to be very subdued, really low. So we come to the material itself, and the bump altitude is five millimeters. And it's going to be way too high. So let's just turn that, let's try that at one millimeter. See how that looks. That's still way too high for what we want. So let's even do maybe 0.2 millimeters. That's kind of nice. Yeah, I think that's kind of what we're looking for. Just a small bit of breakup. Might even still be too high. So let's just do 0.1 millimeters. As you see, as I say, kind of hover my mouse and shake my mouse over the preview render, it actually renders uh, quicker underneath where your mouse is kind of hovering. I think we lost a touch of it there, so let's just make that 150. So 0.15. It's just a little something. Again, it's subtle, but we're just any sort of hard edge you see really kind of alludes to that CG sort of quality. So overall, I think it's looking pretty good. So let's call it quits for this chapter, and then we'll jump back in and do some final tweaking with some rendering, some depth of field, and then finally add that caustic there at the end.